I'm Brent Randall with KYCC, and we are thrilled to have in our studios, in our offices, the Newsboys. Glad to have you here. Is it even, it's not fair to say you're opening up for Mercy Me. No. That's not, we can't say that. We're we're supporting them. They're they're closing the show for us. (laughs) (laughs) They're the closers. Yeah, they're the closers. I love it. So um, I think I know the answer to this, but among the five of you, who's been with the Newsboys the longest? If you had to yeah. go, but Jody left and came back, so it could be Duncan as far as like shows played. I okay, be, I would be second as far as shows. You'd played. be second. Jody but, would be third. I was, I was the first. I was the, the earliest member. The earliest member. Well, so let me ask you this: back when you began, did you see the Newsboys doing this in 2024? No, no, definitely not. I mean, I, to think. You didn't even see it in 1990. No, I mean, to even, to even, my brain could not uh, uh, process anything that far out in the future as far as actually still playing music. So Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. a, it's not lost on us that how fortunate we are to still get to do it. Let me me ask Jeff this. What do you attribute the longevity of the band to? Uh, Well, it's not, it's not due to raw (laughs) talent. Uh, That's for sure. It's, it's persistence and hard work probably you know i think in the early days we just took every opportunity and said yes to everything we could Mm -hmm. and it's funny like after the shows we sign for hours at everyone on this tour and every show we do and meet people face to face i think that goes a long way because like every person who comes down that line tonight there'll probably be five or six hundred of them Mm -hmm. they all have a personal story like we saw you here we met you there and that's a lost art in today's digital age, you know, you can't make a connection yeah. like that face to face. Like we're here today with you, you know, yeah. these are the things we, we remember. You yeah. Know? yeah. Well, which might lead to my next question. Let me ask Michael this. What is, what is the most powerful spiritual moment you can recall? Let's say on stage, most sure. powerful, powerful spiritual moment on stage. I'm sure you've had many. Yeah. I, I mean, Every night when I you know, when I share the word uh, before, like we believe, or maybe an artistic set, um, there's no particular story of like something you know crazy happening, but it's just the Holy Spirit uh, uh, visitation every time. Mm-hmm. I pray every day before I go on stage. I'm in the Word in the back lounge, take my nap, my usual nap, and uh, <laughs> get in the works. I got to eat the Word. I got to pray, and because you know the demons are after us, mm-hmm. so we got to keep the spirit fed. But um, every night, it's a spiritual uh, 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 moment. I mean, just wow. sharing the word and sharing the songs because God's word does not come back void. B. Wow, you just tell them about what yeah. happened in Israel. Yeah, go ahead. I was, was going to say that one one of the one of the greatest stories I can remember. We've you know we've been so lucky and fortunate to travel the world. Um, and a few years back, we got invited to go to Israel by the mayor of Jerusalem, and uh, we, we we he took us around Jerusalem, showed us all the sites, but we got to play on the Sea of Galilee. And there was a moment we were playing at a New Age festival and no one knew who we were. We were the token Christian band because they had all sorts of isms, isms and schisms going on there. They actually had nudism there and it was, it was crazy. It was always... So we, we were there as, as the token Christian band and uh, the promoter had never heard us. He was this rough, gruff. He had a cigar in one hand, glass of whiskey on the... Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, he was one of those kind of guys. And uh, we were very nice to him, of course. We loved on him. And, um, but there was a moment... Uh, in the set uh, where we started singing, I think it was He Reigns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it was one of the most spiritual moments because there was, a, there was a breeze that came off the Sea Galilee and fell over that place. And by the time we played that show, that promoter was a different person. He said, that was the coolest thing. He said, oh. it was the spirit. There was a spirit. Because there were spirits there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Other spirits. <laughs> but I think what it was, it was this palpable. I've never felt it. I've never felt it so physically. The, the, the spirit come across that Sea of Galilee, come across that sea, because we were backed right on to the, right on the Sea of Galilee, backed on, flew over that crowd, and you could sense the change. You could cut it with a knife, the difference between the spirits that were there and not. And even this hardened dude who was who knows what he was into, he said, there's a spirit, there's a spirit here, there's a spirit, I like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's something about the Israeli people, whether they realize it or not, they have this connection 
with with what we know with with the real God. Yeah. And uh, they can't quite put it into words, but they know they recognize it when they when they experience it. So it was a wonderful moment. Anyway, this wow. that that's an amazing story. Yeah, thank, is, thank you, for, thank you for sharing that. Um, there's a line in one of your songs, Michael. Actually, it's one of Peter's songs. I think from from back in the day. Was, was uh, Peter? Who's Peter? What, what, Peter what's, Furler. What's a, what's a Peter I'm Furler? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to Wikipedia, children. <laughs> I love go, Peter. Go first look that up. No. <laughs> first, first or second Peter. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a line. Uh, um, there's a line. When is it ministry? When is it show? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. You know the line I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, I do. Okay. What's the song? Let, uh, let me, uh, uh, the song yeah, is, uh, love, yeah, that, uh, you, love, love is better than life. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Love is better than life. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Just go ahead and play it, Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, the, in the song, your love is better than life, Yeah. there's a line, when is it ministry, when is the show, yeah. I don't know. The, the age-old question. What? So there, there you go. That's the yeah. age-old question. When is it ministry? My when road manager show? is present among us today. He's right over there, Steve Campbell. Mm-hmm. He's always saying, Tate, don't forget to keep it vertical on the worship songs yeah. <laughs> so it's coming at me because, you know, I, I grew up in like, you know, more in a, in a pop band with DC Talk performing, you know, just mm-hmm. like, but there's, I, th- I think it's a bit of both. It needs to keep them in place, you know, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's time for everything. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm very conscious of what's going on around us in a, in a social world, you know, in the sense of like the horizontal, mm-hmm. but that only works and gets, and gets through to people if the vertical is in line. Mm-hmm. So it's just a good mixture of both. Let's bring Adam into the conversation. Here. He's the new guy. He's the new guy. Welcome, Adam. <laughs> thank we you. Love, we love thank him. you. So now I did. Thank you, Wikipedia. I pay my ten dollars a year so I can, so I can read oh, their stuff. You know, um, but you were Mostly a member right. of Audio Adrenaline. Yes. So tell us about you and your career. What's going on? Well, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I started back in uh, like the what my kids call the nineteen hundreds, um, <laughs> playing music, and uh, we yeah, we had a band called Stellar Cart out of Phoenix, Arizona, for years. That. Um, and just had a great run uh, playing, and we played all over California and loved being out here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sang for Audio Adrenaline for a while yeah. and just loved those guys. I grew up uh, listening to them and, and just totally stole all of Mark Stewart's moves and, and mm-hmm. his you know stage presence and, and uh, just loved those guys. So mm-hmm. getting to be a part of that was amazing. Yeah. Um, and then did some solo stuff for a while, mm-hmm. toured with these guys. I first tour I did with you guys was back in – Oh seven. So wow. known all these guys for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. And we've been, we, you know, we hit it off and we have, we have a lot in common as far as just like Jeff said earlier, just working very hard. You know, some of us are blessed with talent. Some of us can sing the phone book and it's great. And then other, <laughs> others of us just have to work really hard. And, mm-hmm. and we just have that same, that same work ethic. And so uh, I think just being friends for that long and being on the road and, and, we played a couple of private events together um, where I helped out just on an acoustic guitar and, and helped Tate sing some stuff. And, and it made sense. It really clicked. Um, <laughs> and half of being in a band is being able to hang with, with the guys that you're with and not completely just want to kill each other all the time. And so, yeah, I mean, some of the time it's okay, like in the van ride over here. But, but it's, it's not all the time. But really, half half of being in the band, at least, is yeah. just the chemistry within the band, and we all, you know, get along well. Fantastic. And it just, I I could provide some things that, you know, could hopefully help newsboys yes, maybe did. even take it to another level that we've mm-hmm. never even seen. I mean, mm-hmm. they've obviously done, you know, so much over the years and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's really cool. And never uh, thought I'd be here, like you know, Jody was saying earlier. Never in a million years thought that uh, I'd be a, a member of Newsboys. It's pretty wild. But wow. uh, we're we're having a blast yeah. and just having a great time. Very cool. Very cool. I've got three more questions for you. I'm going to start, we'll start with Duncan on this one. Um, I was in the audience in Stockton for the Newsboys United oh, tour. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five years yeah, ago. That's right. That's right. I've yeah. never done this in my life. The, yeah. the promoter walked by me. He said, How, what do you think? I said, best. And this is, we, we play everybody. We've seen everybody. We've heard everybody. I looked at the promoter. I said, "Best concert ever." Wow. Period. Wow. And then I've never done this in my career. This was a first and only. I follow. I fanboyed you. I followed you. 
Me, my, myself, and two friends, so we bought tickets for San Jose the oh, next night. Wow. We wow. followed you to wow. San Jose. Yeah. I've never done that in my life. Wow. <laughs> followed Newsboys United for the second night. Yeah. On stage, by, by the way, Michael, Michael asked on stage, you know, last night we were in Stockton. Yeah. What's going on in Stockton? <laughs> Make it fun to Stockton. Right, I, right. I yelled out. I doubt he heard me. I'm like, I was there. <laughs> I'm from Stockton. Let me, but let me ask you about that chapter. Peter Furler yeah. and uh, Phil Joel yeah. rejoined the band for that little window of time. What was that experience like, having every newsboy that was available on the stage <laughs> at the Great same question. time? Do you want the right answer or the truth? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Massive mistake. Oh, God. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you know what? It was one of those things that we wanted because we'd been kind of striving so hard to kind of rebrand when Michael joined. Mm -hmm. We were, we kind of went into this massive rebrand move because we kind of had to, you know, went from this bald white guy to this, you know, black guy with dread. So we had this <laughs> massive, massive issue there as far as, you know, who we were. Right, right. Um, but we got straight into the studio and then I think, Michael, when we you know, released the first first record and the first song, mm -hmm. um, he got to number four on Billboard's Top mm -hmm. 100, and that was that was a, kind of a, a wonderful sigh of relief for the band mm -hmm. as far as where we were headed. Um, but getting to United, um, it was one of those things we kind of sat down and we wondered, I wonder after 10 or 12 years now, uh, whether people might want to see yeah. mm -hmm. some of those classic songs. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, there was kind of a groundswell building so we thought, well, let's go, we'll go throw a couple of shows out there, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And the response was so positive yes. to, you know, and I think for me, I got to play songs I never thought I would. Mm -hmm. For the fans, they never got to see those songs played mm -hmm. and sung. By, yeah. by, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a wonderful moment, but we knew it was a moment in time. We right. knew that it was just going to be for a specific amount. But, I mean, we started off, let's do it for six months. I think it lasted two years, mm -hmm. two and a half made years. A so mm -hmm. made a record, made a that's record. right. right. Yeah. Um, so I think it was, just, it was a nod to the fans. Mm -hmm. For all those people that would say, you know, they've been with us 25, 30 years, wanted to hear the classic stuff that they remember as kids. Mm -hmm. So it was actually, it was, it was an homage to them. And then it, it just worked. And getting to play with Pete and Phil again was just, Bless. it was just so awesome. Because mm -hmm. they're lifelong buds, you know, right. and that doesn't happen all the time. Right. So I remember the first rehearsals were like, uh, it was like in the same room with your new wife and your ex-wife. It was just like, uh, baby, uh, I want you to meet, uh, uh, <laughs> that feeling? I've never had that feeling, but I imagine that's, that, 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 it was, it was in Mike's basement. Mike, Mike's got a, Mike's got this massive house on a hill in Brentwood, Tennessee, and, uh, he allowed us to use his whole basement level for this mm -hmm. rehearsal, so, I hadn't seen Pete for like 10 years. So it was mm -hmm. just like you're walking into this rehearsal space. Drums are set up. There's Michael. I know him. Jeff and Jody, I know them. Then there's Pete and Phil like, whoa. It just like <laughs> took me back to that moment. But it was awesome. Yeah. Well, here's my question. And this might not be a fair question. I'll ask Jeff. Are you still singing? He's got a mic. Are you still singing Shine? You know, it's funny that you uh, asked that question because – we hadn't played it in a long time, and last year we did a tour where, where it was just the five of us. We had no opening acts at all, so for all last year, we just put on about a three-hour show. 30 songs. And we yeah. just played three sets, you know, some of the newer stuff, a lot of the older stuff, an acoustic set, um, all that kind of stuff. So long story short, on this tour, we decided to keep in that tradition and have a small section of our set just dedicated to the classics. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite fun because so many people in California have memories of those Spirit West Coast festivals. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the history of Christian music really started in this part of the country. So you bust out some of those old songs and people like you, like you, <laughs> you know, pop up you, everywhere. You and they, be singing so, tonight, so long right? story short, yeah. yes, we'll, we will be touching on it just for you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite song of the whole, of the whole, <laughs> whole body of work. My favorite. Yeah. Michael, I'm going to ask you a last question. And uh, you said this, the night I followed you to San Jose, um, you came out on stage. You said something so powerful in one sentence. I thought this man just preached a 45 minute sermon with one line. What was that? And I've never forgotten it. You've forgotten it. I have never forgotten it. You said on stage, out in front of God and everybody, you said, I judge you because your sin is different than mine. Mm. All right. 
You remember oh, saying you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. elaborate, Michael, on what that was? We'd like to hear the forty-five minute version yes. of that line. I'll just compliment you with this. You know, the Lord was speaking through you, mm-hmm. and that has rattled around in my brain ever since that night. It's mm-hmm. been four or five years, whatever it's been. So I, how, let me ask you, flip on you, but how, how does, what did that say to you? Like, what is that? Oh, it, how do you interpret it? it I, I like to think I don't judge others. Right. Yeah. I like to think that I don't, yeah. but that just opened up a whole vein of new thought of who am I judging yes. and why am I judging? Oh, I'm judging them because they're not perfect. Wow. Yes. Oh, but, oh, yes. but, but wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it really did made me rethink yeah, that well the now. people that we sometimes attack right. or, or throw rocks at, if I can right. say it that way. Yeah. Right. You know, before you go throwing rocks at somebody, you know, I judge you because. Yeah. Your sin is different than mine. And I just wanted to compliment you. It was just one of the most powerful lines I, I, I ever I'd heard. I'd even add a parallel thought to that or analogy. Is, uh, what do they say? Um, comparison is the uh, thief of joy. And, it's, and guys, it happens so Especially slightly. You know, it's like you pull up to a car. Say you say, oh, to a light. Say you're in a, you're in a Chrysler 300. Mm-hmm. It's a car, right? You're happy. You just got it washed. The rims are amazing. The stereo system is pumping in the car. You're feeling good. You know, nugget pulls up beside you in a Bentley, which quite 300 wants to be. All of a sudden, you're like, <laughs> you're just like, you don't know what you just, it's just hatred. It's, you know, right. it comes out of nowhere. Like, I'm not hate, but you're just mad about it. Right. Because we compare, we compare, we compare. Mm-hmm. And we know we should compare ourselves um, to everything the Bible says, but the, to the Spirit and, and, and to God. But sometimes we fall in that, in that zone of going, you know what? You know, I, 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 I'm just a little better than you are because mm-hmm. of this. And it turns out, we're all a hot mess without the message. Right. Turns out we all need Jesus. Right. Turns out we're all sinners saved by grace plus zero. Yeah. There you go. Good thought. And, and a great thought to wrap up on. Yeah. The Newsboys at KYCC, glad to have you guys. We're Thank thrilled you, to have you here. Yeah. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. KYCC today's Christian music. <laughs> were, were, we, were we rolling? Yes. Did we get that? All right. <laughs>